Hi, Tony here, welcome back to the channel and my long running interceptor project. It has been a very long time since I last brought you an update and uh, there have been a few changes so I thought I'd make a quick video to go through everything that's been done to the bike and look at what potentially I could be doing going forward. So let's go top to bottom and start off with the seat and the rack. Now I did have the original sold out motorcycles short seat and rack conversion on there. If you remember that it was a kind of a steel plate with a stainless steel rack on the top and a short seat. I've now switched that over to their new 2.0 version. So a similar seat, although a different base, this has got an aluminium base and this one has got some nice custom stitching on the top, but it's the rack at the back that has been changed as opposed to having that rather complicated arrangement. We have now got this one piece CNC machined rack which is absolutely beautiful and in the anodized black it works really well and the reason i like this is because i've got that short seat look but i haven't had to cut that frame rail so if i want to go back to the standard seat i can just unbolt this unbolt this pop it all on this uses the same front fixing and the same latch so there's no change to that the only difficulty or the only problem with this if you like that short seat is you can't run this with the standard mudguard because the standard mudguard sits up too high in the rails and this seat fails in it. There is an alternative, of course, is that they do a short loop kit for this as well. So if you're brave enough to cut your rails, then you can bolt a new short loop in and then you can really shorten the back end up. But I like this because I think it still gives that look. But as I say, I've not had to cut anything and I can go back to stock whenever I need. Beautiful piece of kit. The seat is thinner than the standard one, so it's relatively firm, but you know, I've ridden on this for most of the day and it's not really been any problem. It just feels a little bit firmer, but still super comfy, really nice quality stuff. To set this off, I've got one of the brushed aluminium mud guards. Again, a really simple bolt on and we've got a Motone tail light. Now, in terms of the exhaust, I have changed it. On the previous videos, we had their short shot exhaust system. It's the same end can, but instead of ending under here, this has got a longer header, slightly different shape, more of a traditional arc to that bend in there, and it bolts onto the existing mount at the back. Again, a massive weight saving. Uh, I think we're looking at something like 13 14 kilos weight saving in total over the standard system this does come with removable baffles without the baffles it is quite loud um, but with the baffles uh, you get a nice sound to it a really nice deep burble with a bit of bark One thing you might notice on the system is we have got a couple of welds in this. This is because this is a prototype set of headers that I'm using on here. The new headers are bent from one single piece of tubing. So the only weld you have is at the top where they have to put the flange on to fit into the cylinder head. I think it's a good looking system. It sounds good. <laughs> As you will know from previous videos, I switched the rear wheel out. This is now a 17 inch wheel, which allowed me to fit a 150, 70, 17 Dunlop Mutant tire. That gives me the same overall diameter as it would be if it was the 18 inch wheel with the standard tire. And obviously this also means I can go with a wider tire. I think it looks much better. It's definitely improved the handling. At the front, again, we've got a Mutant. We've gone slightly wider than stock but it's the same 18 inch diameter. So overall the gearing has remained the same. The uh, speedometer reading is all as it should be, but it has literally transformed the handling. These tires over the OEM tires are 
just night and day different. You will also notice a change here as well. Um, and I have fitted a set of the Olin's STX 36 RE912 rear shocks. Now the reason I changed these is twofold. I wanted to improve the ride quality and the damping on these is so much better than the originals. Uh, nowhere near as bouncing. You've got plenty of adjustability. You've got preload adjustability at the top here, but you've also got a damping rebound adjuster on the bottom. You've got 20 clicks of adjustability there. And I found the stock ones were a little bit too quick, which made it a little bit bouncy, and I'm able to tailor that. The construction is beautiful. I think it looks better without the piggyback on this type of bike. The combination of that tire change and these have really transformed the ride on this. Much plusser, much better damping. And these are not as expensive as you would expect. Everybody thinks well, Olin's are overkill, etc., etc. These are not. These are just a standard set of shocks, and they retail, I think, including VAT in the UK, at about £650. Some people might balk at spending money on shocks, um, and I still see people putting those god awful tech shocks on their bikes. For me, tyres and suspension are really important if you can spend as much as you can afford on getting those bits right. That's the bit that keeps the bike under control. That's the bit that keeps the rubber on the road. At the front end, we've got a bit of a change as well. So we've got these beautiful CNC machined headlight brackets, again from Sold Out Motorcycles. I'm not sure if they're on the website yet, um, but they should be hitting there soon. And to match up with those, I've got some Moto Gadget Mo Blaze indicators, tiny little LED indicators, but super bright. I've also added some yellow tint to this. A few people asked me about what lens this is. This is just some cheap uh, yellow vinyl window tint that I got from eBay. With a heat gun or a hairdryer and a bit of time, it's not too bad. I have got a couple of creases on here which I need to sort out, so I may well redo it. Um, it's just something I've always done with these type of bikes that I've had. I quite like the look of it. To go with the rear suspension, I have got some progressive springs again from Olin's, which can be replaced in there. So a new set of springs and shims and oil, but I haven't done that yet because I didn't want to take the front end apart until I knew what was going to happen with the yokes. And the choice of the yokes will depend on whether I'm going to stick with the stock ones. If I'm going to change the clock setup, um, I will talk about that in a minute and various other things but handlebar wise i've still got the stock handlebars on at the moment with the stock yokes and everything else i have got a set of black uh, fat bars to go on here they will involve changing these um, risers because the bar width at the bottom is wider than the standard ones the decision then comes as to whether i continue to run with the standard royal enfield controls which will be the easiest solution or whether i take those off and replace them with micro switches if i do change those that makes things a little bit more confusing not only from the wiring although that's not too bad because these bikes don't have a CAN bus, so you don't have as, as many problems as you would do on a, on a different bike. But it does mean that I would have to put a different throttle assembly on here. I think what I'll probably do is go with the black bars, retain these standard controls to make things easier because I've just got to take them off, fit them back on. I don't have to change anything else. Um, but it also means that I can get the Moto Gadget bar and mirrors on. Uh, and then I can decide what I'm going to do about the clock. So let's look at that now. Initially, I was looking at changing these clocks and I was going to run with a smaller single clock and mount it in the top of the headlight back to do something similar. And that I think is a quite a nice looking system. But the more I've been riding it, the more I quite like this classic double clock setup. So I've been trying to work out what I can do with it. And it may well be that I'm just going to paint these chrome bits and black those out and do the same with the headlamps around and then leave it at that. And that means then I don't again have to then change the top yoke, which is an expensive thing to do. I've still got the short mud guard on, which is fine. I get a lot of people going, well, it's not practical. You're going to get mud and rubbish and that splashed up the front here. Yeah, that's fine. I appreciate that. And I know that this is a sunny day out for a ride bike. I don't commute in it. I don't use it all year round. I don't really care about that. If I get caught in the rain, I can wash it. Um, so yeah, if you don't like it, tough. So once I've got these bars sorted out, these big dog bollock mirrors out of the way and that front end neatened up, the only other thing left then potentially is a paint job. Now I do like this 
style so I would potentially stay with the same colours but probably mix it up a little bit so keep the predominant white with the red and the gold but maybe change the design a little bit and I'm going to lose this Royal Enfield and replace it with the more retro looking RE circle logo again I've not yet decided what to do about that and that's an additional cost and actually finding somebody to paint tanks now uh, where there's not a massive weight is quite tricky I'd also quite like to change this looks pretty good but I'd like something maybe a little bit slimmer so I'm looking for a solution for that too so there you go I just wanted to bring you a quick update of where we were with the project there's a choice now for me to make as to how far I go with this and I think the changes that I've outlined would make things simpler and get the job finished quickly but there is also a bike that I've wanted for quite some time uh, which has cropped up. I do have the opportunity to get one at a good price um, but I can't do that unless I raise some funds. So that does mean that this bike could potentially be up for sale. So if there's anybody interested in picking up a bike that has been breathed on and uh, modified slightly then let me know in the comment section down below or dm me through instagram i can't find the seat at the moment but I've, other than that i think i've got all of the original parts that we can revert this back to standard if you want to that would all be included in that and if somebody wants to take the bike as it is or with some of the additions in terms of a paint job and the bars and everything else then we can discuss prices around that so i just haven't ridden the bike as much as i thought i would i do really love this it's a great fun bike but the opportunity i've got to buy this other bike means that this would have to go in reality to make that happen um, if you've got any other questions again let me know in the comment section down below uh, but all that leaves me to say is until next time and potentially the next episode on this bike take care ride safe and i'll see you soon Bye.